Malachi chapter 3 verse 13. Your words have been stalked against me. A complaint. Saith the Lord. Yet ye say, What have we spoken so much against thee? Ye have said. Now remember, most of Malachi, God is speaking. And when he speaks, he quotes what they're saying. I think Malachi is going to picture judgment for the Christian, for the lost man. I think we're, I think at the great white throne judgment, I think the lost man is going to be given all opportunity. <coughs> Excuse me. Everything he wants to say. And then God's going to rebuke Imagine if you would put a charge against God, how wrong God is, and then God quotes, opens the books, and quote everywhere. Oh God, you never gave me a chance. Imagine every Christmas carol. Every time he went to the radio down, he went right by that, that preacher. Every time he's flipping through the channels, he went right by that preacher. How about a visit from a... From a minister in the hospital, he I mean, ye have said it is vain to serve God. These are the priests. You know, you gotta think about it, you gotta look at not listen, I'm not saying every Baptist preacher. But you gotta realize that great man that you have in your pulpit, he may be behind the scenes that you know what these people. Why am I doing this, Lord? At Doe Valley, they don't listen to me. They don't give heed. And for many of them, for many of them, and they go into the ministry to be, I only work one day a week. I'm serious. There are men that go into the ministry, I am only going to work Sunday, and that's it. And ever since the epidemic here, they don't even work Sunday night. And they get a good paycheck. And I've seen things, I'm down here in Florida, I'm from New England. I see, well, I'll make, my wife will be the church secretary, and we'll give her a salary. Whoa. I know preachers back north, and can, they do the books. They don't get extra pay. They go and run to the post office, run to the city hall, and then they go to, to a widow's house and rip up the toilet and put a new one down for them, and they don't get paid extra. I'm telling you, you preachers in, in Florida, Florida, because where I live, you have got it easy compared to up north. And there may be men in the ministry, any denomination, if no denomination, and, and you get up there and people think, oh, this is a great, wonderful message that you rehashed from a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. You got on the Internet, you photocopy out of a book, whatever, and you're up there. You know what? This ain't worth it. You know, it's what behind the scenes that you don't see, the Christian. Now, you, that person you know, that comes in, oh, they're, they're such a wonderful, great Christian family and all that. Yeah, Sunday morning. What prophet, notice how that word's spelled, is it that we have kept his ordinance, that's the law, we're under the law. Are you kidding me? Are you really kidding? All right, now, now you see that prophet, the ordinance of law? Run back up to verse 8. Will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me? Well, you say, wherein we have robbed you with, in tithes and offerings. Okay, back to where we were. What prophet? The Levites, the priests, got the best meat. They got the first fruits of all. Remember we talked about all the fruit of the ground, fruits and vegetables. They got all the best of the animals. The cow, the, the, the sheep, the goat, the meat. They got the best honey. They got the best. 
And then the, the Baptist preacher runs to Malachi 3, you know, you're robbed from God. All right. In the context, now here the priest, God says, listen, the, the people have robbed from God. And then now you're complaining, I'm giving you the best. But if they rob from God, they're not getting the full. They're not getting enough. And woe be to the church congregation that stir that stir that starves their pastor out. And I've seen it. They don't pay him enough. Everybody in the in the church parking lot has brand new cars and he's got a fixer upper duper cooper. It's running by uh, WD forty duct tape and a lot of prayer. And he'll get weary out, he'll get tired out, and he don't get no help, he doesn't get... <laughs> and pastors, good pastors are falling away. That we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. <laughs> Nehemiah said, I was sad before the king and I was frightened. <laughs> and now we call... The, and as a result, we call the proud happy. We sit here being starved because the congregation is not taking care of us. And we look to the rich men and all that, and, and you know, that's what that's what the big appeal for Donald Trump is. He's rich, and look, look, everybody. And look at those lowly people here. And we're calling evil good and good evil. Because the whole attitude in Malachi for the priest is, you know what? It's bread every week. I put the bread out. Oh. Got to light the candles. Got to trim the wicks. They're not giving the, the offerings they're supposed to be giving. And on the law, the law. And I'm telling you, the ministry for the good and for the bad can be very burdensome. You don't get the attention you should in a mega church. And I laugh now. I see these people, you know, it's Sunday, go to church. Where are you going to be Sunday in church? I think, you know, it'd be good if you could be in church. It'd be, you know, the, the churches say, bring them in, bring them in. And the, the members of the church can't come to church because no one will pick them up. They won't get it. They won't give rights. Oh, we got such great people here. Uh, Pastor, you know, I, I can somebody pick me up? So I, I'll give them some gas money. I'll look into that. And. Lord, do you see that? I asked. And then the Christians are like, they're getting weary. Oh, that church is so great. Yeah. How come I'm sitting on the street with no one else holding signs for Jesus? And I'm I'm not talking about the gripers where there are people there are people I'm talking about the people in the church they're, they're not doing all they care is about themselves and when they're done caring for themselves they care for themselves more I'm not belly aching I'm telling you the cold has fact there are and have been wonderful. Preachers and pastors, they're on the verge of just giving it up. There are Christians out there. That they're on fire for the Lord. That they're ready to go, and they shouldn't, but they're ready to give it up. They that work wickedness are set up. And what you're doing is now with the book of Psalms, you're, you're fretting. You're envying. Oh, look at that. Look at that family. They're not saved. They don't go to church. They're doing well. 
We had taken our eyes off the when the church takes their eyes off the future and where these people are really going, you look at the now and present. And there will be a time when we just had a hurricane come here in Florida. People say, oh, you know, we got to get back on track with God. No, they, we got to call the insurance company, get the government done. Da, da. Hurricane Ian or whatever the name was hasn't even touched the floor of Florida. And the president of the United States will we'll provide all the funds needed. Excuse me, Mr. Catholic. From Maryland. How come you didn't say let's all bow our heads as a nation and pray as this storm comes? Presidents used to say, governors used to say, our prayers go out to those people or for us. Not anymore. Here's the one hundred number. FEMA to the rescue. God's like, you didn't learn your lesson I wanted you to learn. You have to get something bigger. If the church, if the Christian had the insight of where these wicked people are going, they're going to die, they're going to end up somewhere, you wouldn't be saying, oh, look how great and wonderful they're doing. There are people that die with this hurricane. Where are they? There was a guy, I don't want to say where, but it's actually really foolish, if I can say it. I don't want to be cruel. A guy went out at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning during a hurricane to, to, to drain his pool, and he, 80 years old, I think it was, and he, he slipped and fell and he drowned. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. The circumstance, is he in hell right now wishing that listen, a drop of that rain, and we got a lot of rain. A drop of that pool water. I just only had a little drop of my tongue. Well, not every Christian has a pool. Not every Christian has a house. If there's one, if there's two things, people, a soul has need. Number one, they need to be saved. Number two, everybody knows somebody that needs to be saved. They that tempt God are even delivered. So wickedness abounds, is what they're saying. We're here in the temple, we're doing everything by the law, we're you know, cutting this way, it's cutting that way, baking it this way, measuring it all out, and this particular time, this particular way, this particular thing, and they're not doing nothing. Look how well they're doing. And we got it messed up in the church, and we're going to be real quick on this. Is we looked at the world, and said, you know what? The world is doing well. Let's bring the world in. Let's use the world in their happiness. Let's use the world in their celebrations to win them to Jesus. We'll use the wicked to try to make it good. Then they that fear the Lord, here's the ones that fear God, Spank often one to another. All right, here's the back and forth. They love the Lord, they fear the Lord. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for all them that fear the Lord and that they thought upon his name. Now that's quite interesting what he said. Here are here are Christians. Here are people right with God. And they are right with other people of God. And they both fear the Lord. And they're given testimony of God. While there's one group of people looking at life and saying the wicked are doing so well. And there are those who are doing right by God, and they fear God, and they're saying, hey, you know, this is great. Now let me tell you, hey, this is great, this is wonderful, it does not last 
100% every hour of the day. I, as a born-again Christian, I get to, you know, I get looking across the fence. I get looking over on the metal. I get the, the you know, the heat, the, the, you know, the feel sorry for me. And I know I ought not. I got up this morning and I said, you know, Lord, I, I, I've got a house. I got walls. I got a nice comfortable bed. I'm dry. I got the electricity. There are people who don't have that today. And some of them are Christians. And there are people in Florida and one of the Carolinas, I wasn't I haven't really following it. They're out of the world. They're not saved. They're as wicked as all wicked could be in Florida. And their house hasn't been touched, and they've got the luxuries and wow. But there's coming death. And no matter what the world has, well, the wicked are doing well. Those that fear the Lord, whether in the Old Testament or the Christians today, is keep giving testimony. Keep speaking the well of the Lord. That will get you and your brethren out of, you know, oh, well, look at them. Isn't it better over there? And they shall be mine. Now that book of remembrance is being said by the people, not by God. But God says they shall be mine, say of the Lord. If there's one thing to be that in heaven, the glory of God, God looks down, that's mine. That's not mine. That's my son. Now, he may be not doing right, but that's my son. I can never, never disown that one. That one there, unless you get right, go to hell. Apart from me, you work with iniquity. I never knew you. I, you can say I I I hate the sin. And, and no, no, you can say that all you want and love the sinner. I I don't love you. You're not mine. You're the devil's child. That's my son. And the devil's blessing you and making you all great and wonderful like that. And, and my child's upset. But there's coming a day you wait to see what my child is going to get and what you're going to get. And I told my child to go in the world and preach the gospel, tell him how to get saved, how to do right and be right. You see, it's the devil that's got it backwards. Oh, if I'm living a wonderful, great life right now, I've got to be right with God. And then they die off and fall off in eternity of hell for all eternity. And they never come out. And that, and that saved man, he, he, he closes his eyes to his world, he opens them up to Jesus, and he hears the singing, and he never stops singing like the prodigal son. And when we get to that, oh, Lord God, I, I, you know, there are times I wanted to give up. There are times I was just so, it did not look good. And I was like, that's okay. That devil's a deceiver. But you held out. You stay. Listen, it's not that we win the race. It's winning. It's going through the finish line. One day, we don't know when, there's going to be a Christian who's going to come across that, that line. He's going to be the very last Christian. And he'll be no different from Peter, James, and John. He crossed that line. There are many Christians like Demas, they don't cross the line. You know, when the rapture happens, God's like, hey, there's the Christians. They're on the road. <laughs> All right, we already pulled the ones from the grave. They're in the road. <sighs> now these people, we, we, we got to look in the crowd and find where these are. 
but there'll be none left behind. They shall be mine, saith the Lord. Can you imagine what of all that could be on this earth? And whatever heaven, whatever utopia that man and religions come up with. Virgins and Pope land and whatever it is. Your own planet. Can you imagine what it is to have God Almighty and his son with the nail pierced hands and say, You're mine? That father, when the son came at home smelling like pig swine, and then tell me where I live, it's funny because there was, there was a dump. And just before the dump, there was a pig farm. Huge. You could smell that pig farm over the dump. Matter of fact, the dump when you got there was like uh, one of those trees you hang in your car. That, the father didn't say, oh man. I know he said get him clothes, but no, that, that, he wrapped his arms around his son. Imagine, we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and nothing else, and God says, you're my son. You are a very good son. You're my son. Or I am well pleased. You're my son. In the Bible, Jesus says that, that Satan is a father. John 8, 44. Can you imagine what your father is going to say? Satan? Satan doesn't even give you a thank you. In that day, what's that day? What's that time? In that day, when I make up my jewels, I will spare them. Who? Those that fear the Lord and those that God says mine. What are we talking about? The ones that are His and fear God. And, and our gods, they're not going to be trampled at the judgment seat of Christ. For the nation of Israel, they're going to be picked up by Jesus. And they're going to be taken over to the promised land. And God looks at them, not the church, not Christians. He looks as the, as the Jew, the Hebrew, your jewels. Now, if you want to make that Christian, you can't. Because the Bible says we're going to get gold, silver, and precious stones. Them are jewels. That's not us. That's crowns. Israel, and we talked about this before, is the apple of God's eye. And he's their jewel, which... There are religions out there, replacement theology, God's all finished with Israel. Well, what woman who's got fancy jewels in her jewelry box, I'm going to get the name of it. What woman to say, I had to throw this in the garbage, just throw that. She wouldn't. I will spare them because there is the other group of people verse 15 as a man that spares his own son oh look look at the analogy there the prodigal son you're my son you're my child that serveth him So what's hated, but what you find Jesus talking about is servitude. You can't say Lord Jesus and not serve God. Then shall ye return. Oh, that's an interesting word. And discern between the righteous and the wicked. Huh. 
That's the judgment. That's the great. That's the second advent or the great white throne judgment. To him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Don't worry if the proud are happy. Don't worry if the wicked is set up. Don't worry if the tempted of God are delivered. God knows who are his. And if you are oppressed... Wouldn't it be interesting at judgment, whatever judgment it would be, that that one oppressed you, and you two are standing there before God, saved or lost. You're a Christian. That person is saved or lost. Your judge is God the Father. And he's not going to be bribed. There's going to be no improper judgment. It ain't going to be because of color, race, sex, whatever. It's going to be, yeah, you did oppress. And you're guilty. And then when you are found guilty by God, shoot, that's it. For the Christian, he loses. Those Christians that are guilty at the at the judgment seat of Christ, ashes. Those that are not gods at the second advent, trampled. Those that are good and those who are not good, as we go into the promised land, they're going to get inheritance. They're going to get reward. They're going to get something for doing good. And the Christians that do what God tells you and, and do it to your best of your ability, there are rewards. And we don't see them now. That's faith. There's so much in here to say, oh, give, 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 give your tithe, give your tithe, God will fill. And see, what they preach is God will fill your warehouse right here and here and now. Everything be great. You know what? Okay, it could be great here, but I'd rather have it be greater in heaven and forever. I'd rather have gold, silver, and precious stones in heavenly bank than have gold, silver, and precious stones in have a hurricane blow it away and you can't find them. Can you imagine with this hurricane, whatever his name is, Eon, can you imagine how much has been lost? You're not going to ever going to, or maybe it'll be found one day, but it, it's lost. You can, where's our pictures? Where? Where's my bracelet? Where's my watch? Where's my car? And when we get to heaven to be gold, silver, and precious stone, you're not ever going to say, where is it? It's on my head. And then and the tragedy of, of these hurricanes, all these people, God says, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. You're not mine, you're not mine, you're not mine, you're not mine. Woe be to any leader that addresses a nation in tragedy and does not mention or to call it upon God. He 
You say, well, you know, things would have been different with Donald Trump. Donald Trump would use the name of Jesus just to please the Jesus people. As much as he would use the name Ronald McDonald if he was inside a Ronald McDonald. He would not mention Wendy in Ronald McDonald's. If he was in Wendy's, he would mention Wendy. The people that come up with their speeches know how and what to write about their speeches. You would figure a Catholic, he's a Catholic, President Biden. But when did Catholics ever have God involved anyway? 